In this lesson, we'll apply materials and finishes throughout our staircase design. Okay, so now that we have all our elements in place, it is now time for us to start bringing this design to life by applying some materials. So I'm going to go ahead and switch my graphic display. Um, up to this point, we've been working in a shaded because we're mo mainly trying to get our forms in place. But I'm going to switch to a more realistic look. That way, all my colors are in place, my shades are in place, and I can really start making better judgment call on um, how I want this design to turn out when I'm applying these materials. So let's start our application with our handrails here. So what I'd like to do is, right now when we're looking at this guardrail, we have our bottom rail and our top rail. And this top rail mainly is acting for structure. So I'd like to add a wood top rail here, really for decoration and also um, to really add some volume and some thickness to this railing system. Um, so let's go ahead and get that accomplished by simply clicking on that rail. And we're going to edit type. And what we're going to do is we're going to make some adjustments to the rail structure. So I'm going to edit that. And we're going to take the same approach we did when we applied that bottom rail for structure. We're going to now going to now apply the same approach to get our wood top wood rail and structure. So I'm going to go ahead and rename that wood rail. And I'm going to set its height to three feet. And this is where it's going to stay. So we're not going to make any more adjustments to its level. But I do want to make sure I select the right profile. So I'm going to go with this 2 by 3 inch here. That way it's large enough and it to really help me get that effect of a heavier looking rail system. And for material, very important, let's go ahead and select a cherry material. So from this window I'm going to select that one. But I'm not going to go with the default color or appearance. Um, I want that red, a little more true cherry feel to it. Um, right now by default this one has an orange stain color. So we're going to make an adjustment to that. I'm going to go with this color here. We'll click OK. Apply and OK in this window. And we'll do the same thing here. And apply and OK. And we'll kind of check and check our progress here and see if we need to make any additional adjustments. But so as you can see, we definitely got our wood rail in place and that material is assigned. And it's looking really nice with the form that we have for our balusters. But I can see the structural top rail actually bleeding through my top wood rail. So let's uh, change that dimension. Let's shrink it down just a bit and let's drop it down to its level. That way it's not bleeding through, but it's also providing support for that top rail. So to do that, I'm simply going to click on my rail system. We're going to edit type and we're not going to edit anything here with the rail structure or the baluster placement. We're simply going to do it in our type properties window here for our top rail. So we're going to drop this one down three inches. So from three feet, we'll go to two feet, nine inches. And we're also going to make an adjustment to the dimensions of that profile. So I want to get something that's a little bit smaller, um, but it's going to have a nice curvy effect um, kind of to match what's going on with our balusters that we created earlier. So I'm going to go with this circular one and a half. And we'll probably get a warning from uh, Revit just letting us know that this rail has a few little breaks in it and it's not a continuous one continuous piece, which is totally fine with me. I just I really want to get these pieces in place. Um, so I'm going to click apply. And there's that warning I mentioned. We'll click OK and we'll click OK here. And you can see we just accomplished what we set out to do. We've got a really nice wooden cherry wooden handrail here. And just below it, type in TL to change my thin lines. And just below it, we have our circular rail to provide structure and also to add some extra depth or, or thickness to these guardrails. So now we could kind of take a similar approach to our treads and risers. I definitely want to take that cherry material and apply it to my wood here. So let's go ahead and start that process. So I'm simply going to click on my stair and I'm going to edit stairs and I can click on any one of my stairs here to work on the edit and I'm going to edit type and in my type properties window we should be able to see materials and finishes and there it is. Perfect. So we are in good shape. So now all I need to do is click in my by cat category window and we're going to start with our treads that's the actual surface we're actually stepping on so I want to stick with that cherry color that we applied to our handrail so I'm going to go with cherry and we're going to make sure that same stain is there looks good so I'm going to press OK apply and OK and I'm going to kind of check my progress here we'll hit the green check mark just to let Revit know I'm done with what I want to do for right now 
And so far, we're looking really nice, and this staircase is really, really coming to life now. So no longer is it just one solid color um, with just a bunch of forms in place. We've got materials added. We have structure in place, and it's really, really starting to look a little more realistic. So now let's apply some more materials to our stringers here on the side. I want those to be steel, and I want to have that same steel material for our risers as well. So we can simply just click on our stairs, double-click it, and I'm going to click on my stringer there and we'll go edit its type like we've been doing and we should be able to click on its materials and finishes and we can add a nice steel finish to this so i'm going to go down to my window here until i see a steel finish that fits my taste here we'll go with this metal steel let's check its appearance to see how it's going to look in a more rendered view uh, i think we can change its type real quick i want to go with maybe a stainless steel that way it'll have a nice reflective a look to it so I'm gonna click apply okay and we'll go okay here green check mark and we'll see what Revit look tells us so right now it simply looks great but what I like to do when to really get a good understanding of how this is gonna look maybe in a rendered view I'll go to my graphic display and we'll click the ray trace button and what that'll do is we'll click on it and gradually over time the quality of this image will gradually get better but the benefit of this is I don't have to wait on this image to render it's kind of doing it slowly but surely right before my eyes and I can see all the reflections I need to see I can and I can see how the materials interact with each other so this really helps me make some judgment calls on my design as well all right so I'm liking how this is looking we really don't need to keep this but this is a way that I kind of make judgment calls with uh, applying materials so now I can close out of that I'm not going to use that view just yet so we're almost done with materials we've got one last set of materials to add. And I want to apply materials to our risers. So click on the stairs again like we've been doing here. And we'll see if we can't get to the riser material. Perfect. And again, I want that to be the steel material uh, that we were using. And I want to make sure it's the stainless steel so I get the same reflectivity. Perfect. OK. Apply and OK. And green check mark. And really quickly, just to kind of check my progress, I'm going to roll around here and we'll do another ray trace view here just to see how my materials would look in a much more rendered look. So we'll ray trace. Oh, it's looking really nice. I'm, I'm really happy with the way this turned out. So I like the material choice we did and, and the way we went about getting this done was a really nice streamlined way. So in the next lesson, we're going to provide some structural support for what's going on on the bottom of this so that we can make sure our staircase can stand. So I'll see you in the next lesson.